The NBA season is almost upon us, and with that brings a new class of rookies fighting for a chance to make their mark on the league. In this video, I want to take a look at the race for the 2024 Rookie of the Year award and see who has the best chance at being crowned the ultimate freshman of the NBA. Without further ado, I'm going to run down the candidates who, in my opinion, stand the most realistic odds at being in this discussion by the end of the season. First up, this race wouldn't feel right if the number one overall pick's name wasn't at least in contention, so get after it, Victor Wembanyama. Not that a lot of explanation needs to be given about this one, but regardless, I'll circle back to each of their cases after I've listed out the possible candidates. After Victor, the number two and three overall picks, Brandon Miller and Scoot Henderson, are both in positions to give a worthy Rookie of the Year campaign. Chet Holmgren also cannot be forgotten, this year will be his rookie season after all. And that's about it. I would be pretty damn shocked if anyone outside of those names won the award. And if I'm gonna be honest, Brandon Miller isn't really in the race, but I added him anyways because it's likely that he'll be in the conversations. But I think Victor Wembanyama, Scoot Henderson, and Chet Holmgren are the ones who the race will come down to. The reason I'm a lot more hesitant to consider Brandon Miller is not because of him or his abilities, but more to do with the configuration of the Hornets. The Hornets are really weird and super ugly and need to do something about possibly the worst roster in the league, but either way, I can't really discern exactly what position Brandon Miller would be playing. He's listed everywhere from a shooting guard to a power forward, but it honestly doesn't matter because in any of those positions, I don't think Brandon's likely to be the starter. In the beginning of the season, the starting small forward spot will be between him and Gordon Hayward, and while he had a pretty lackluster season this past go around, he's now had a fully healthy offseason and will be playing in a contract year, so Gordon Hayward is probably going to be better or at least a bigger part of whatever it is Charlotte does. And even if Hayward is buns like last season, Miles Bridges is coming back after he serves a 10 game suspension for beating the mother of his children last year, and I don't know how good he'll be after taking a year off from the NBA, but last time we saw him, dude was averaging 27 and almost 4, so if he was at that level, that's another player who would be having a larger role over Brandon. And other than that, I'd take PJ Washington at power forward over Miller, and if he was to play shooting guard, not before Terry Rozier you don't. So point being, I think he'll be coming off the bench mostly, and he could still end up putting up good numbers, maybe something like 15 points, 5 rebounds, and a couple of assists, and being a dark horse that's mentioned whenever the Rookie of the Year conversation gets boring. Kinda like Benedict Matherin last season, being like definitively the best rookie off of the bench, although let me make it clear, I'm taking Matherin over Miller. Anyways, holy shit, I've said all of this just to explain why Brandon Miller is not in the conversation, so I'm gonna shut up. That's why though, I just don't think there's going to be enough room for him to have the volume production needed even though the Hornets stink like sewage. So back to the actual conversation. Barring any injuries or setbacks, I think Wemby could have an incredible first season in the league. Obviously his potential is so high it's tickling heaven's ball sack, but he has enough skill and the physical tools to make a decent amount of that potential translate to the NBA immediately. The defensive end is where we should expect to see Wembenyama excel pretty much out of the gate. Standing at 7'4 with an 8'0 wingspan is pretty much the blueprint to being a generational rim protector, so even if he lacks the speed or strength to keep everyone in front of him, he can use his size and extremely high level defensive instincts to make up for that. Wembenyama's room for error when it comes to defending the interior is probably higher than anyone's in the league due to his size and mobility. And if he makes a mistake, there's gonna be more opportunity to recover and still at the very least contest a shot from a player of any size. There's a reason why his defensive potential is like all-time GOAT level, and I don't want to be one of those guys who overhypes players into the stratosphere just to tear them down when they don't meet their ridiculous expectations, so I'm not going to say he'll be in the conversation for defensive player of the year or any crackhead takes like that. Although, if he were to get a couple of votes for an all-defensive team, that wouldn't surprise me much. Offensively is where I'm not going to expect a whole lot immediately. He'll be a great play finisher around the rim with the pick and roll, backdoor cuts, and other stuff like that. Also, I'm sure he'll hit crazy shit randomly from time to time, like a step back three off one leg, or hit a deep baseline turnaround jumper like a giraffe sized Kobe, or maybe even get a put back dunk off his own miss. I know that would be crazy, good thing he's never done that before, right? 
Also, I'd expect mostly around the rim stuff, not just because of his own limitations, but also because the Spurs have outside shooters like Devin Vassil, Reggie Bullock, Chetty Osman, and more, I'm sure, I just don't watch the Spurs. Additionally, out of the established pecking order with the Spurs, there's only a guaranteed one, maybe two players who will be taking more shots than Wemby, that being Devin Vassil and Keldon Johnson. I imagine Vasil will be the team's primary ball handler, he was pretty damn good when healthy last season, plus I don't want Wemby to be bringing up the ball every single time trying to be a point guard, and Keldon Johnson has earned the right to be the second option, but he probably won't be taking that many more shots than Wemby, if at all. Wen Benyama would 100% be my favorite to win the award, however there are a few things keeping me from calling the race before it even begins. Mainly, I really expect the Spurs to be super cautious when it comes to how much they play him, so even if he doesn't sustain any serious injuries during the season, which of course I hope he doesn't, there's a really good chance that he frequently doesn't play things like back-to-backs, averages the lowest amount of minutes out of the other two in this conversation, and possibly only plays like 60 games. I'm not someone who cries about his frame and how he's going to get bullied because I don't think that's completely true anyways, and plus, Victor has something way harder to gain than a few extra pounds of muscle. This dude's flexibility is otherworldly, and I think it's going to help him and his awkwardly large frame not get hurt all the time. When it comes to players as big as Wembenyama, their downfall is often related to their mobility and how they were never made to be moving as fast or as sporadically as NBA players. But Wemby can, and I think that's his true superpower. Regardless, we've never seen a player like this, and it makes all the sense in the world to limit how much he does out of the gate. And if that's the case, I think having played significantly less than his peers could factor into voters not wanting to give him the award. But either way, I predict that he'll probably put up like 18 points, 8 rebounds, maybe like 2 assists, and have the narrative working in his favor the entire time. Next up is Scoot Henderson, who was drafted to the Portland Trailblazers, and is probably the most NBA-ready player out of this entire draft. Predicting how his rookie season will go, however, is super difficult because the Damian Lillard trade still hangs in the air. So it either goes one of two ways. If Dame isn't traded, or is but not until like halfway through the season, Scoot's numbers are going to be greatly diminished, and he'll spend a lot of time coming off of the bench. Not that that would change how good he actually is, but again, the Rookie of the Year award has a heavy emphasis on counting stats. But if the Dame trade does go through and he's off the team by either the start of the season or very shortly after, Scoot Henderson would be my favorite to win Rookie of the Year. The reason why is because there will be virtually no one on the team in the way of him having as much statistical output as possible. There's no one else on the team who's a true point guard, so Scoot would be able to have the ball in his hands a lot. And with guys like Anthony Simons, who's a sniper from three, Shaden Sharp, who's an athletic play finisher, and Jeremy Grant, who can get his own shot off, it wouldn't surprise me much if Scoot led all rookies in assists. His athleticism, shot mechanics, IQ, and finesse should all make him a more than serviceable NBA point guard from the jump. Someone I could see averaging 20 points, if not more, as well as maybe five rebounds and up to like six, six and a half assists. And lastly, Chet Holmgren of the Oklahoma City Thunder is the only other player I think has a chance at winning the Rookie of the Year award. A lot of the upsides to Wembenyama are pretty applicable to Chet. He's a super tall, ball handling big that people complain is too skinny. One of the main differences between the two, however, besides the fact that Chet doesn't possess quite as much size as Wemby, is that Chet is a much more polished offensive player. I'm a lot more confident in his ability to take a defender off the dribble, make the right read from inside the paint, and I think his relatively smooth jumper will have more success at least early on in their careers. And at 7 foot with a 7.5 foot wingspan, Chet will also be a great rebounder and elite interior defender who makes up for his skinny frame and lack of perceived strength with a generational defensive instincts and the length to alter or contest just about anything that comes at him. Also, while Chet missed his true rookie year with a season-ending injury last summer, there is immeasurable value in the year of experience he has with the Thunder. He might not have checked in and played any minutes, but he's gotten accustomed to the schedule, the traveling, the dietary responsibilities, the resources he has as an NBA player, and training at an NBA pace. So I think it should be kept in mind that Holmgren is a lot more comfortable in this environment, and it very well could translate to his performance in his first year playing. It might sound like I'm making the case for Chet to be Rookie of the Year, however there's a few reasons he's not my favorite to win it. The OKC Thunder are by far going to be the best team any of the rookies I've mentioned will be playing on. 
Having made an appearance in the play-ins last season and serious chances to make the playoffs this time, the Thunder have a lot more guys actually playing impactful basketball. It's not so much that Chet is fighting for a starting spot, because it looks like he'll be the starting center over Jalen Williams, it's more the fact that, as I said, this team has like, real contributors. Shea Gilgis Alexander obviously is coming off of a 30 point per game season, finishing 5th in MVP voting, but there's also guys like Josh Giddy, the other Jalen Williams, Lou Dort to an extent, a top 10 draft pick from this year, Kaysen Wallace, and all of those names except maybe SGA and Lou Dort, I expect to average more than they did last season. So through no fault of his own, I just don't think Chet will have the volume of opportunities on offense to put up the numbers that would have him seriously over, at the very least, Victor Wembanyama. For his Rookie of the Year campaign, Chet might end up averaging around 15 points, 7 rebounds, and like, 3 assists, and while he'll 100% be the only one in this conversation contributing to a genuinely decent team, I think that aspect, if considered at all, would actually detract from his case because it's harder to observe the impact on winning you're having when your team is already pretty damn good. Side note, I'm personally hoping that Chet and Wemby become the next great rivals of the NBA. Both are generational talents with similar frames and skill sets, both are starting their careers this season, both play in the Western Conference, and both have been drafted by teams actually suited to build a winning franchise that could last. If I had to say anything negative about player movement, I'd say it's made it a lot less frequent that we get good rivalries in the NBA because things are just moving around too much, but this one right here, this rivalry has potential to be an all-time great one. That brings me to Scoot Henderson versus Victor Wembanyama, which will hopefully be an amazing back and forth all season long. Now, everything up until this point I wrote before the Dame trade finally happened, and now that we've been released from the clutches of that unholy drama, I feel even more confident in saying that Scoot Henderson is my pick for the 2024 NBA Rookie of the Year. He has the talent to produce great numbers as a rookie, and the players that have been added to the Blazers from the Dame trade will likely just give Scoot more opportunities to grow his playmaking. Wembenyama isn't going anywhere though, and who knows, maybe he'll be one of the greatest players of all time right out the gate. Either way, we'll revisit the race for this award at some point during the season, so I think I'm going to call it there. That's all I've got for this video, I hope you all enjoyed. I'm going to be making similar style videos for some of the other major award races as previews for this upcoming season. It's going to be a great time, so you should consider sticking around for those. Thank you all so much for watching, I'll be back soon, but until then, take care.